What is going on? I'm a state certified driving instructor. I teach adults. I teach teens. Class is in session. We're talking about beginning drivers. If you have questions, go ahead and put them in. I want all of you to have a very active discussion. Let's go ahead and talk about some of the things that beginning drivers need to know. When you're driving on the road and you hear an emergency vehicle, hey, how are you? What I need you to do is pull over to the right side of the road. If you can't pull over to the right side of the road, stay where you are, pause, and the ambulance or fire truck will drive around you. Hey guys, how are you doing? Hope everyone's doing good. So emergency vehicles, let's go ahead and talk about this. When you're driving around emergency vehicles, you're gonna hear sirens, you're gonna hear a flash. I need you to get over to the side of the road. Let's talk about adapting to new driving environments. All of you who are tuning in, you're new drivers. You wanna learn how to drive. Well, we're gonna have a discussion today about helping you learn how to drive. And we're gonna talk about understanding the environment that you drive in, whether it's in a neighborhood, a school zone, a hospital area. You always wanna be safe and consistent. Let's go ahead and get it. When you're driving in a new environment, what I need you to do is not struggle. I'm gonna give you an example. Isabella struggles when driving in a new city. There are different patterns, there are different rules. You find it very challenging and unfamiliar, such as downtown Detroit, Michigan, downtown Houston, Texas, downtown Los Angeles, California. What I need all of you to do is take your time Plan your trip so you're not caught off guard. You're less likely to panic. You're less likely to make mistakes. What is our learning target? This is beginning driver class. I'm a state certified driving instructor. I teach adults. I teach teens. You have questions. You need to go ahead and put those questions in. Let's talk about understanding road construction. We all dealt with road construction, moving very slow, car overheating. What I need all of you to do is listen to these tips and I really want you to set a positive goal to help you learn how to drive. Example, uh, Mason is unsure how to navigate through road construction and this leads to confusion and close calls with barriers and workers. When you're driving, I need you to take your time. I need you to be mentally alert what's in front of you, what's to the left, and what is to the right. This way you can understand what to do. If the speed limit is 45, you need to drive right above 45 miles an hour. If the speed limit is 55, you need to drive about 55 miles an hour. Thank you. Let's go ahead and continue. How to properly use your headlights. What I need you to do is focus on what I'm saying. What is our learning target? It is beginning driver's class. I wanna welcome you in. I'm a state certified driving instructor. I teach adults, I teach teens. Go ahead and put your questions in. Let's talk about using headlights. Zoe forgets to turn on her headlights at dusk. Dusk is when it gets dark. Dawn is when it gets bright. What I need you to do is understand that your headlights give you visibility. That is your ability to see. You as a beginning driver want to see what's around you. You wanna see and be seen. It is so important that you understand those positive goals to live your best life. Next, let's talk about handling unexpected obstacles. Example, Daniel is caught off guard when a deer suddenly comes out and crosses the road. Then he doesn't know how to react. What do you do? Do you stop? Do you drive around it? Do you honk your horn? The one thing I need all of you to do, don't veer for the deer. Take your time. I really appreciate you watching those videos and that helps you pass your test. Appreciation. That means so much because it's all about you. It's not about me. It's about you, the viewer, learning how to drive, learning how to pass your test. And when you have questions, you put those questions in. Thank you. Let's continue. Let's talk about using your turn signal properly properly. This is going to be on the test. Let's go ahead and talk about this. You want to use your turn signal 100 feet or a half a block. 
This allows cars behind you to slow down or change a lane. Very often, beginning drivers turn on the blinker too late. I need you to share this with everyone so we can get a party on here. I really appreciate the help in this, uh, providing uh, an opportunity for you to pass your test because it's all about you, it's not about me. I wanna help you all reach your goal, become a good driver. So when you use your turn signal properly, let's go ahead and talk about this, Lily often forgets to use her turn signal or uses it too late, confusing other drivers and increasing her risk of an accident. Use your blinker early, use it often, so drivers behind you know what to do. If they need to change lanes to the left, they can change lanes. If they need to change lanes to the right, they can change lanes. Let's go ahead and talk about adhering to the speed limit. What is our learning target? This is for beginning drivers. I'm here to help you learn how to become a really good driver. So you need to be following along, you need to be following me, you need to be listening, you need to be putting in your questions so you can pass your knowledge test or your road test. Let's go ahead and keep going. So we're talking about adhering to the speed limit. Example, Nathan struggles to maintain the correct speed, like a lot of you do as beginning drivers. It's hard for you to have good speed control. So we're gonna talk about how you maintain speed control. Either he drives too fast in residential areas or too slow on the expressway. This causes serious safety issues. What I need you to do is pause for a second. You need to go with the flow of other traffic and you need to make sure you're keeping up with them. Beginning drivers either go too slow, 10 under, 12 under, or too fast. So once you learn speed control, then you're gonna be just like everyone else, driving at a good, safe speed. What is our learning target? Our learning target is beginning drivers. I'm a state certified driving instructor. I need you to put in your questions so I can answer them, and then let's keep it going. Interpreting road markers. Very confusing for beginning drivers, but your uncle's got you. So let's go ahead and talk about this. Interpreting road markings. Ella is confused by different road markings. Hey, getting the license next week. I got my license next week. What should I uh, know? Hey, right now, what I need you to focus on is right of way. Beginning drivers confuse stop signs, S-T-O-P, to yield signs, Y-E-I-L-D. Make sure you come to a complete stop for a minimum of three seconds. Next, I need you to learn the rules of the right of way. If a car gets there first, you're the first one to leave. If two cars come together at the same time at an intersection, the car on the right has the right of way. Also, right turn on red, you have to stop first because you have a red light. And check to your right to see if there's a sign. Let's pretend my hand is the sign. If it says no turn on red, you cannot turn. You have to stop. If there's no sign there, you stop. You look to the left. Traffic is clear. You look to the right. And then you turn in the nearest lane. That's some pretty good information. I'm 20 years old, still don't have my license. That's okay. What I need you to do is look at my content, leave questions. I will help you understand what to do. So let's go ahead and continue. Interpreting road markings. Ella is confused about different road markings, like a lot of you are. So what I need you to do is look at where you are, such as a bike lane. There's a bicycle uh, lane, and there's actually a drawing of a bike on the ground, bus lanes, as well as sometimes inadvertently going into restricted lanes. So what I need you to do is understand. I appreciate you too so much. I'm very passionate, right? Let's go ahead and continue. I enjoy helping all of you elevate and reach your goal. Let's talk about handling blind intersections, okay? So blind intersection, James feels very nervous and approaching a blind intersection where visibility is limit, limited and unsure what to do. Uh, this could be where there's a building, this could be tree, overgrown trees. What I need you to do is slow down and pause and look left and look right, make sure it is clear. And once it's clear, 
then you proceed. Next, let's talk about parking and tight spaces. A lot of you have questions about maneuverability. Here it is, parking in tight spaces. Uh, Madeline has trouble parking in tight spaces like a lot of us do. So what happens is she often needs to attempt multiple times and feel stressed about hitting other cars. What I need all of you to do is practice at home, practice pulling in your driveway, go up to your school parking lot, a shopping mall area, practice pulling into the parking spot, make sure your car is in the spot, park it, get out and look to the left, am I in the lines? Get out, look to the right, am I in the lines? You need to know how to parallel park because you're gonna be going to a downtown Detroit, Michigan, downtown Los Angeles, California, downtown Houston, Texas, downtown Atlanta, Georgia. Those huge metropolitan areas, you have parking, you have parallel parking spots. Let's continue understanding vehicle limits. I got a lot of questions about what car should I get for my first car? Well, let's talk about this. You're gonna get a mid-sized car that will protect you and you wanna look at the crash star rating. The crash star rating is the rating of the car versus safety. Let's talk about this. Ethan drives an older car, doesn't fully understand its limitations, such as longer stopping distance, shorter reaction, and leading to unsafe driving conditions. This is where we're getting very granular and talking about information to help all of you become good drivers and I really appreciate you. Next, let's talk about identifying hazardous roads. As a beginning driver, it's difficult to identify hazardous roads. What do I mean? Gravel, a dirt road, one-way streets in downtown areas. So let's go ahead and talk about this. I need you guys to share this out right now. If this is bringing you value, share it out. Get your people in, say, hey, he's here. He's talking about driver's ed. Let's go ahead and talk about this. So identifying hazardous roads. Chloe struggles to identify and react to road hazards such as potholes, debris, or animals on the road, increasing her risk. We want all of you to be safe. Drive at a slower speed, analyze the area that you're on, and then you will be successful. Let's talk about identifying traffic patterns. As a beginning driver, you have driving going into the city driving going into a suburban area, driving going into a rural area. There are three different areas that require three different things. I need more questions. Put those questions in. I need you to share this right now. Share, share, share. Let's talk about uh, identifying different traffic patterns. Luke finds it challenging to adjust to different traffic patterns when visiting another city often feeling overwhelmed with new driving environments, and this is true. So, what I need you to do is plan your trip. Do pre-planning, where you are going in, checking, where's my parking? Where am I gonna stay? Where does my uncle live? Where does my grandmother live? Where can we visit each other? Are we meeting downtown? Are we meeting on the urban fringe? When you plan, you're going to be more successful. Let's talk about navigating toll roads. If you know what a toll road is, put yes in. A toll road. If you know what a toll road is, put in yes. Navigating toll roads. Examples, Isabella is unfamiliar with toll roads and gets frustrated and when approaching the toll booth, she's unsure how much to pay. Different states, different regions around the world, you have to pay to go on a road. What is the difference between a solid white line and a dashed line? A solid white line prohibits you from crossing that line. A dashed white line allows you to change directions. Bing, 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 bing. Let's keep it going. The best. Next, let's talk about handling roundabouts. Noah encounters a roundabout for the first time and is unsure how to navigate, causing confusion and delays. Here's what I need you to do. Go slow into your roundabout, take your time, yield to traffic that's already in the roundabout, use your blinker. If you're going to the right, you need to turn your blinker on to the right. If you're going straight through, 
no blinker needed. Hey, let's share. What is our learning target? We're talking about beginning drivers. How do you navigate? What do you do? Let's talk about when to yield. I have some questions. What are some of the things that are on a road test? You have a combination of yield signs, stop signs. If this is bringing you value, give it a thumbs up. Do all those things. Let's keep going. Recognizing when to yield. Sophia often misinterprets situations. That's what beginning drivers do. They drive very confusing. And as a result, they don't yield to other drivers, leading to near miss collisions. A lot of you have seen my content before. We yield. We stop at a stop sign. A stop sign is red with white letters that say S-T-O-P. Stop when you're supposed to. Look left. Look right and continue. I want to say thank you. I love you. Bye.